Hey, this is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my post-production tutorial videos. I'd like to thank everybody for checking out all my videos and making comments and subscribing and all that stuff. Appreciate that a lot. Again, if you have any questions or videos that you'd like me to do, just leave a comment below and I will be doing some more. So today we're gonna learn a little bit about sharpening. This is actually a requested tutorial. People have been asking me, how do you sharpen your images? How do you do sharpening in post? And what's the difference between sharpening in post and sharpening in camera and all of that goodness? I guess I have a couple main things about sharpening just to start out with. So first thing about sharpening, uh, inevitably somebody will shoot a video and they might miss their focus just a little bit. Let's say we're doing a documentary about stuffed lions and uh, the way that they act in the wild. And we're shooting this lion and just miss the focus just a little bit. He's a little bit soft. And so, okay, we gotta sharpen this, right? Gotta bring him back into focus or else people will know that, man, I just missed that focus. So no problem. I'm just gonna add a sharpen effect and just punch that up. There, he's nice and sharp. Awesome, render. This is an example of over sharpening and I see it a lot, especially in noob videos. Number one way to make your video look like a noob is over sharpen it. And so it looks crazy like this. Nobody's gonna like that. It's not even stylistic. And this image looks horrible and you should feel horrible for making it look that horrible because you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to ruin it. It's better just to leave it soft than to do that foolishness. And I'm coming down hard on you because I love you, all right? This is tough love, okay? We're gonna learn how to sharpen the pro way. But first of all, let's talk about in-camera sharpening. When you have an image that is not sharpened in camera like this one, it comes out a little bit soft. I also shot a version with sharpening. This is sharpening added within the camera. And of course, this shot is sharper than this shot without the sharpening but it also has this kind of weird texture over it. And so when I play it back, you'll realize it. It kind of has this strange grit over this whole image. And so without, it's a lot softer. It's a little bit less pronounced. And the big reason for that is because of the sharpening. That's not to say that this texture might not show up later after we sharpen, but right now it's totally locked in. The very first time we look at this image, this texture is locked in and so it kind of paints us into a corner. So we either have to work around that kind of strange texture or we have to noise reduce it. There's all these things that we have to deal with just because this is already baked in the image. This it's not so bad and we kind of have more flexibility to play with the image. So that's one of the major reasons it's a good idea to not sharpen in the camera. Now, here's a note on that. This is a screenshot of the custom photo styles on the GH3, which is what I shot this footage on. And uh, you'll notice I have everything set down to negative five. This is contrast, sharpness, saturation, and noise reduction, all to negative five. The reason for that is because when we set this at zero, it is actually still adding a little bit of sharpness to the image. This in-camera sharpening was not set at plus five, it was set at zero. And so it's adding this much sharpening just at zero. So if you don't want your camera to sharpen your image, or at least sharpen it as least as possible, turn it all the way down to negative five. And this is part of the settings that I use all the time when I shoot on GH3 or just about any camera. I pretty much turn everything all the way down and shoot as flat as possible. The least amount of contrast, least amount of saturation, and the least amount of sharpness. And every camera has something kind of like this. It could be called photo style, could be called custom image settings, whatever. But you want to turn your sharpness all the way down. So now that we have our image that is not sharpened in camera, it's like the purest video signal that we can get out of this camera with the least amount of processing done to it within the camera. Now we can play with things in post. So how do we sharpen something in post and have it look good and not like a macaroni monster threw up all over it? We're gonna add an effect called unsharp mask. And so I'm gonna right click on effect controls and go to blur and sharpen 
and go down to Unsharp Mask. Unsharp Mask is in After Effects, it's in Photoshop and Premiere. It's in just, it's in tons of programs. And so chances are, if you're using a program that plays with images, it probably has some version of Unsharp Mask. Now, right out of the box, let's see what it's doing. I'm just gonna turn this on and off. And it is adding just a little bit of sharpness, but the power of sharpening in post is really in these little controls here because we can dial in this sharpness and make this image look as good as possible without adding a bunch of noise or textures that we don't really need in our image. And before we get into these controls, I wanna talk about what this is actually doing, what's actually happening here. So I'm gonna move in a little bit. What this Unsharp Mask is gonna do is find the edges in our image and it's gonna increase the contrast at the edges. So if I boost up this amount, it's making these black parts darker and these light edges a little bit lighter. Pretty much getting rid of the medium values in between and making it seem like it's sharper. Even though it's not really, we're just adding a little bit of contrast at the edges. It looks sharper to the eye. So let's go through these controls. First of all, the amount is pretty much how much contrast are we adding? So zero is obviously adding no contrast and 500 is just jacking this thing up. The radius is pretty much how big are these edges. And so if we have our amount all the way up, we can see that this either grows our edges or it makes them smaller. And this radius is in pixels. So if you have a hundred pixel radius, your image is gonna look crazy. A lot of edges are probably gonna be you know, one pixel wide or two pixels wide, your radius is never gonna be this high. It's gonna be more like one or 1 1.5 or something in there because you want to accentuate these little details here, which are just not very big in the image. We also have our threshold and the threshold is pretty much just telling this Unsharp Mask filter, okay, what do I consider an edge? Is it something that has any difference at all like all of this noise back here, or is it something that has to have a really, really defined edge? So this edge right here on this dog's ear, that's gonna be a really nice high contrast edge. And so I can pump this threshold up quite a bit before it starts blurring out that edge. See, this is a pretty high contrast edge, and so it's still sharp and bright right there, even though this is at 0.13, which is a pretty high threshold. And if we turn it down, it starts letting in just any one. It's like amateur hour for edges. And so that's nice for cropping out things like this noise in the background and just keeping the edges that we want. So that's how all those controls work. Now, how do we actually do anything with them? And this is a technique that works for sharpening, but it also kind of works for color grading and for any type of adjustment that you use on an image. And I call it over and back. And so what we're gonna do is just go crazy and just pump our amount all the way up so that it's just stupid huge, okay, just ugly. And the reason for that is I want to set our radius first and I want to be able to see what we're doing, okay? And so I'm gonna take my radius down and I'm just gonna start slowly pumping this radius up until I start to see those ugly halos showing up. So right there, this is too much. This is a get beat up after school caliber radius. And so this is way too much and now I'm gonna bring it back. That's why I call it over and back. So I go over and then I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit to where it stops looking so horrible. All right, this is still too much because our amount is way crazy, but it doesn't look like there's a halo around everything that's just nuts. So I brought this back to a tasteful level. So I've set my radius and I'm gonna go over and back with my amount. And so I'm gonna pump up my amount until it starts looking weird. I'd say maybe there is where it starts looking weird. So I'm gonna bring it back. And it's better to do this at like 100 or 200, not 400 like I've been doing. So that's too crazy. And I'll just bring it down a little bit. Okay, so we're at 1.2 and 125. And it maybe just looks a little over sharp right now, but that's okay because we're gonna start messing with the threshold. Now again, the threshold kind of crops out some of the lower contrast areas. And so I definitely want to get rid of this texture back here. And this threshold is really, really touchy. And so what I like to do is just 
make this slider nice and big so that I can really dial this in. And my goal is to get rid of this texture back here but keep as much sharpness in the fur as I can. And just with the first tick, that texture is a lot softer. And our fur still looks pretty good. Here's before, here's after. So it's still adding plenty of sharpness to our fur. I might even take my radius down just a little bit. Because I think that's maybe, maybe too much. And so I'm kind of getting rid of that little texture back there and keeping some sharpness in the fur. And so if we look at this at 100%, we have a nice sharp image without as crazy of a texture back there. So this layer is sharpened in post. This layer is sharpened in the camera and you'll see they look just downright almost the same when it comes to sharpness. But you'll notice there's a difference in the noise pattern. So if I zoom in here, this is sharpening in post and this is sharpening in the camera. And you can see there's a difference between this texture that's in this footage and the nice kind of soft noise that's in this footage. And it's all because we sharpened in post. But as far as sharpness goes, our subject looks nearly identical. So that's the pro way to sharpen. We gotta keep it tasteful, use unsharp mask, and set your settings to your footage. Now, you probably won't have time to do this for every single shot, especially if you're doing a whole movie. But what you might do is pick a couple shots in Premiere, sharpen them this way, and use these settings for your whole timeline and see how it looks. And you'll probably get pretty darn good results that are better than the in-camera sharpening. And then my final point about sharpening is it's a good idea to do all of your sharpening the very last step. And the reason for that is you want to make sure that your image looks the way you want it to and that you aren't worrying about a bunch of detail that might get lost in color grading or anything like that. So I'll just do a quick grade on this. Actually, I'm gonna add a LUT and I'm gonna use one of the Titan LUTs. This is from a LUT pack that's designed for video shot on GH3 and GH4. And I'll just put this on top of my unsharp mask. And so I'm doing all my color grading and then sharpening the very last step before I render. So that's pretty much how I sharpen my footage. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you like this video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button. And if you wanna see more tutorials about post-production, about color grading, editing, maybe even more sharpening, who knows? Make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Anyway, I think that about does it for me. Once again, my name's Casey Ferris. I'll catch you next time.